Welcome back to the Lawrence McKenna channel where the race for top four is very much still alive. It looks like there's three teams in it. There are really just two. It's the North London Derby, which is probably going to decide this one. And at this point, there's very little between the two sides. If you saw Spurs win today, you would have been quite convinced by their performance against Leicester. And frankly, Leicester weren't really the side that they were at the start of the season. So we're maybe not having the right yardstick there. And then if you'd have seen Arsenal's very, I, I call that a really impressive performance, actually. But it's still, Arsenal's impressive performance against West Ham, you probably also say, well, are West Ham at the moment the team that we would consider to be the yardstick? And yet, West Ham are still kind of in within an outside uh, idea of these teams that we think of in the European position. So both the teams have put in an, a very good performance against sides that at the start of the season, we would have thought, hmm, Arsenal and Spurs might struggle against these guys this season. What I'm saying is the level of both these North London teams is basically coming to a peak at the right point in the season. Spurs know how to get the best out of their front line at this point, whilst there are still some weaknesses at the back. And Arsenal are really just finding the balance in this side and learning a lot more about their game management and all the different aspects that come with competing for top four, especially against teams like Manchester United, West Ham and other teams in that area. I, I would put Wolves in there, but institutionally, you'd say that it's probably beyond them at this point. Arsenal are making the case as to why they deserve to be in this top four race at the moment. And part of it comes from the idea of having not only goal scorers up front in the likes of, you know, Emile Smith-Rowe, you could put Nketiah in there, though he's only scored a couple of goals in 2020 so far, and obviously Odegaard and um, Saka up there. But when you get your centre-backs scoring, you've got that kind of Laporte, Virgil van Dijk type feel, maybe even a Diaz snatching a goal here and there. You're into a different feeling at Arsenal. Now, I don't want to make the case for the idea that if your strikers don't score, then everyone else needs to make the, do the job. But if you use the tools and you need a hammer to smash a hammer, that's what Arsenal did. And frankly, once that Mikel Arteta can get Arsenal into a position where they are following these detailed instructions, where it was very clear that the centre-backs today were told to do very specific things in order to get these goals, then you're sort of into the next version of your team. You're no longer just trying to find yourselves. You have found yourselves. And at this point in the season, it's the teams that will be successful that have found themselves in versions 3, 4, 5, 6.0. Liverpool are doing that right now. Man City are doing their, that right now. That's what's pushing them even further. And frankly, Arsenal have been forced to find that because of the A, injuries, B, small squad size, and C, at times, I think the, the people who they've wanted to be in those positions haven't been able to be, so they've had to adjust some of the uh, positioning within the team, not least the likes of Xhaka and El Nene at the... Um, El Nene and Nini and... How do you guys say it every time I get caught up in that? But the point is those two guys are there. Tavares at left back, sometimes you feel there is a bit of a weakness there and they're having to trust him in ways that maybe they wouldn't want to. And frankly, yes, I do believe Eddie and Ketty will probably sign again. But at the same time, I don't believe he would be their number one preference next season. So we're looking at a side here who have to paper over cracks. Um, and that's probably being a little disaster -izing. Um and at the same time, they are still able to compete within the Premier League. This is a team that not long ago, I also knew Edu, Mikel Arteta and other key figures in the club clearly thought, well, we know who our preferable starting eleven is. And if we can start those guys, fantastic. But they can't do that right now. Tierney's out, Partey's obviously out. It changes the structure of the side. And that's why they're getting into these sort of a passing rhythms within a game where they are definitely showing that they're capable of controlling sides, but also getting into scrappy games where you would have thought, hey, we need someone like Partey, we need someone like Tierney. And this team are showing that they are more than just the sum of their parts, which is exactly what you would want if you're an Arsenal fan right now. Of course, Spurs are finding their feet as well. And there is something very impressive about that. There is something which Early on in the season, we would have doubted that either of these teams would have found their feet. And at this point, we are finding both are almost doing so. My argument today would really be that West Ham are a much better yardstick than Leicester. Now, 
The other aspect of that is that today we also saw Bakaya Saka limp out of the game. And, and of course, it's good to have someone be able to come on for him. But you don't really want to see, especially at this point in the run-in, one of your key attacking figures having to limp out late in a game. Because frankly, I think West Ham got a little frustrated today. I think West Ham found that their level was this Maybe it's slightly below Arsenal, maybe it's slightly below Spurs. And also they're worried about the other game they've got coming up later in the week. And therefore, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a cloud over it for those guys. It's not me really saying that I think West Ham aren't capable in the long term of competing in this area of the league. I don't, still don't think they've quite got the squad to compete in the Champions League. But it is me saying that I think that in terms of tactics and in terms of team cohesion and in terms of I don't want to say quality of player because that doesn't seem charitable and it doesn't seem fair to this West Ham side. But when it comes down to it, I still think you see the difference in quality between the two sides. And that's not down to investment. The two sides have invested very similar amounts in recent years. It's not down to management because I genuinely think that David Moyes is a quality manager. But I think it does come down to system. And then you're coming down to overall club structure and everything else. And resource to some extent. And on a daily basis, perception. And then that history of both clubs impacting that perception. That's a very long, very long-winded explanation of what I think is going on at both Arsenal and Spurs right now. And honestly, it's probably a little bit too vague for me to say that I deserve a Pulitzer Prize for it. But you kind of get what I'm getting at here. There is an Arsenal team who believe that if they continue down this road they will be able to cement a position. And there is a Spurs team who believe if they continue down this road, then there is the chance that they could get in there. But Arsenal currently believe this team are capable of staying in this position and that they will add to this side. Spurs believe there will be a bit of revolution meets evolution if they are to get into the actual Champions League places slash win the Europa League slash just be competing in these general areas. So let's look at Arsenal's run-in, and I've kind of brought it up here. Let me just bring that up. Okay. You're looking at, and this one's quite exciting now, Leeds United, a desperate side. Tottenham, I mean, we'll talk about that one last. Newcastle United, not desperate, but strong in form, and one of the, if not the second most form side of 2022, very much up there with it. A side who recently probably got stomped down by Liverpool and so will want to be showing they can compete at this level. Then you play Everton, a side who's desperate for points. Then then that's it. I mean, I was going to bring up Orlando City and Chelsea on the 23rd of July. Both of those very exciting games, considering the trip to Orlando. Anyway, th that is very far in the future, but also good for you guys. The trip to Orlando in the preseason. I like that. Anyway, the point is, in these last four games... There are three teams that are huge stumbling blocks and one team, which is Spurs, which I don't consider a stumbling block. I consider them to be a rival. If Arsenal get top four this season, it will be down to the fact that they deserve it. Because if you get top four from this, this last four games, no one can question whether Mikel Arteta deserves the plaudits, deserves the manager hype, deserves the transfers that he would probably get in the summer. And no one can question whether Orlando will see a good game of football between Arsenal and Chelsea. Anyway, the point is that while Spurs have got their slightly easier run in than this, I still find Arsenal to be the favourites for me. I think Arsenal are this, a team that think they will prove it this season. And I think Spurs still have too many question marks over them. I think West Ham still have too many question marks internally to get into that position. And I think Manchester United, well, Manchester United are busy being Manchester United. And frankly, one more win for both Spurs or Arsenal. And we're looking at Manchester United being out of this race. It's a ridiculous thing to say, considering the squad, considering the investment, considering everything else. But the fact that Arsenal and Spurs are finishing above those guys this season, and I believe they probably will, basically shows there were better management of both those clubs. And with what we thought Manchester United was going to achieve at the start of this season, what we thought Arsenal and Spurs were going to achieve at the start of this season, it's either an indictment of Manchester United or Spurs and Arsenal both deserve more praise than they're getting. 
Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be tomorrow at this point. But until then, have a good night. Enjoy the top four or close to it. And I'll see you guys later. Much love. Bye.